thing I wanted to say that stuck out in my mind, apart from all that the, there was a, a wealth of information here, and it sort of <coughs> was making my brain go down and down and down because it is quite oppressive, I think. Um, I don't know how any of you felt. And <coughs> as a survivor myself, not of honour-based violence, but of domestic abuse and sexual violence, um, what stood out for me is the LGBTQ lady that said she couldn't be here because of mental health. And I sort of wanted to bring it. I, I never sort of rehearsed what I'm going to say because I'm always wondering what's going to come up. Um, but I wanted to bring it in the room now of women um, and, and survivors in general, victims of abuse. And, I, and, and men are just as important victims of abuse um, as women. But as we know, uh, violence against women is like that. Um, men being the perpetrators. So, um, in saying that, I run an organisation um, for the work that we do, and I certainly cannot cover my work without people like Alison, there's Pauline in there, I could name lots of names as I'm going through, people that work in refuge, there's support workers, givers, and people in hospitals, you know, safeguarding teams, everyone, this is about everyone, all of us, um, working together, I certainly cannot do my job on my own and I wouldn't even profess to. But um, yeah, I set up Freedom Together because it was really, really important to me that we looked at the aftermath um, of domestic abuse on a based violence. Um, at currently, the groups that I'm running at the moment, we have three women on forced marriages, which um, I'm really pleased that they're coming through now seeing them come through. I don't know what's changed. I don't know whether it's because we're covering the 12 London boys, and that's because they're, they're, I haven't looked at the stats that much at the moment because it's important that I just look at the women and I'm listening to them and not the stats, you know, recording all of that, which is very important, obviously. But um, it was really, really important that to me to come here today as a survivor of violence, but also is is how many people are involved in this and how the simplest of things is about listening to, I'm not trying to teach you to suck eggs at all, but listening to victims of abuse. I know a lot of people, and I went to a conference recently, and they didn't want to use the word victim, or oh, it felt a bit uncomfortable, but I have started uh, bringing that back into my work. So when I worked with sexual violence, it was very much survivors, always called victim survivors. You didn't call them victims because in some way that looked like they were weaker in, in some way. But I want to bring the word victim very much back into the vocabulary um, of us victims because where there is a victim, there is a perpetrator of crime. There, there is a perpetrator there. Um, so yeah, that's it's education is what we cover. Um, bringing women in and holding them during that process of understanding really breaking down the word domestic abuse, which is most definitely interlinked to honour based violence, most definitely, because it's all about um, not having the freedom of choice. You know, if you just simplify everything, there is no freedom of choice in these homes. There is no freedom of choice in domestic abuse, and there is no freedom of choice in sexual violence. Basically, there's no consent. There is always a repercussion if you challenge someone's you know, authority. And that's what it's all about. So yeah, it's, I'm feeling that we do have a place here and we do have some knowledge in this, but it's, it's all interlinked. Rape, domestic abuse. Oh, sorry, I thought we were sticking your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, there was Sharon in the background going. Um, it is all interlinked. So yeah, I haven't got a long time to talk to you, but we run projects in the London Borough of Croydon um, for women and girls, but long, they're working with survivors and victims. It is a lot of work. Um, a lot of us aren't funded adequately to do long time, you know, you know, keep going. But we're looking at ancestry trauma, going back, you know, especially with honour based violence, I believe, and you may want to correct me if I, I'm, I'm wrong, but 
It's gone back in history of trauma over trauma over trauma that has come through. And that's what we're dealing with now. We're, we're not dealing with just 2020. We're dealing with hundreds of years ago of, of abuse against women and, and violation against women. So, you know, I know I've not got long. And I, I had a million things I wanted to say. But well done for being here. And um, well done for listening.